Hello again everybody, this is Craig Evans of Autism Hangout and thank you for tuning into this Autism Hangout special report. Today we're going to be talking about a couple of new things, a couple of very exciting new things, and we're going to be talking with one of my favorite authors in the autism arena, Rudy Simone, and you probably already know her from one of her bestsellers, which was 22 Things a Woman Must Know If She Loves a Man with Asperger's Syndrome. And there's two new books that are coming out in the horizon. I had the good fortune of getting an advanced copy of one. This is actually going to be called Asperger's on the Job by Future Horizons. And another one called Empowering Asperger's, Empowering Females with um, uh, Asperger's Syndrome. But I'm getting way ahead of myself here. I want to bring my favorite author on. So Autism Hangout, please welcome Rudy Simone. Welcome, Rudy. It's nice to have you back. Hello, Rudy is, has just finished this, this fantastic book about Asperger's on the job, and she has taken the time to put together an educational program in the Autism Hangout Education section. But the beauty of this program is that, yes, it talks about the content from the book, but she takes it a number of steps further. The book is very instrumental in helping people on the spectrum determine what areas they may work best in, how they can find jobs, and how they can stay in those jobs. But, Rudy, I think it's best coming from the horse's mouth, so would you like to talk a little bit about this program and your book? Uh, yes, I would. Thank you. Um, as workers on the job, um, I'd like to say, first of all, I've had the good fortune of having Future Horizons publish it. It's coming out this May. And also had the good fortune to have the foreword written by the marvelous um, Temple Grandin, wow. one of my favorite people in the universe. Um, absolutely admire her and her work. Um, the book... First, I think the most important thing that I want to do with this book is debunk the myth that high-functioning people don't need assistance, finding work, and staying in employment. Uh, because we're high-functioning doesn't mean that we don't have the same, the same triggers and the same social issues, the same cognitive issues to a lesser degree, but they still very much affect our ability to find and keep employment. Mm -hmm. It's not a lost cause, obviously. Um, there's some... It's about arming yourself with information, um, working with your strengths, working on your deficits, but working with your strengths, mm -hmm. um, finding something that you're passionate about, and then learning, of course, all the other myriad aspects of employment, you know, social issues, um, sleep issues, sensory issues, things like that. Two things in particular that I, I want to bring out. Number one is you talk about the high percentage of people with Asperger's syndrome that are actually looking for work that are unable to find it. That's kind of the dark side. And then the very, very bright side is we can talk about all the traits of an Asperger's person that are very positive that help them succeed in work. But let's talk about, uh, let's talk about how many people are in the job market now first. What were those numbers? It's very difficult, obviously, to come up with an accurate figure, but it's thought that between 80 and 90 percent of people on the spectrum are not in full-time employment. So they're either they're either unemployed or underemployed or working in, um, beneath their, their level of skill and ability. Um, what I found when I was researching my first book um, about relationships is that a lot of the people I, I was talking to were out of work, and I was speaking with people in their 40s, 50s, and even 60s who were living back at home with mom and dad because they couldn't afford, um, even though they were high functioning, they couldn't afford because of their difficulty keeping employment mm -hmm. to move out and be on their own. So it planted a seed in me and I felt that something needed to be done, um, so hence the book. And now on this program, which I'm offering at Autism Hangout, because I'm in a funny place in my career. I have two books coming out. I went out already, but I'm not getting out on the conference circuit just yet. I think I will be uh, soon. But I wanted to bring this information to people now, yesterday. So that's why I thought I'd make this companion program to go with the book and make it available on your wonderful site. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, let's talk about some of the very positive aspects of somebody on the spectrum in the workplace. And by the way, if you're an employer out there listening to this, there's good news for you too. Rudy, I know that there's a lot of good about people and there's a lot of traits. Can we talk about a few of those now? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have a hard time with, with memory, so I haven't committed them to rote memory, but I think they include things like focus, uh, diligence, mm -hmm. um, honesty, that ability to say the emperor isn't wearing any clothes, which is sometimes crucial. Um, because we spend so much time alone, 
we really develop our own thoughts, our own unique unique way of thinking. Um, we don't run with the pack, so we don't we don't say things that are politically expedient. We say what we believe to be true. Mm -hmm. um, so these are just some of um, the some of the many um, positive attributes of Asperger's syndrome. And of course, there's a each one of these things can be a double-edged sword. For example, honesty, we all know the, the legendary Asperger bluntness. These are things that I talk about in my book about how to work, you know, how to be honest, but yet make that more appealing. Um, mm -hmm. So sort of a little bit of a cultural exchange between how we perceive ourselves and how the non-autistic population sometimes perceive us. Our, our motivations are often misunderstood. I find that being misunderstood is, is one of the um, most painful and difficult parts uh, mm -hmm. of having Asperger's syndrome. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that uh, your book talks about and you talk about in your program as well is the focus. And you've already mentioned that as a strength. Well, if somebody is fortunate enough to be able to determine what those focuses are as it applies to capitalism or in the workplace, their odds of success just go right up the scale. So in your book and on the online program, I know you have worksheets to assist people in finding some of their skill sets. Could you talk a bit about that? Yeah, um, yeah. I, I think I don't develop this formula. It's very simple. Um, it involves listing um, your areas of passion. First of all, just using a worksheet, listing all your areas of passion, because we know we as ambassadors have our obsessions. Some of those are very obviously marketable obsessions, and some are a little bit more obscure. And, and But within the seeds of our obsessions, you will always find the seed to a proper vocation. Um, okay? Mm -hmm. And then also, what you want to, what we want to do, or what we dream of doing, sometimes doesn't always mesh with uh, our sensory uh, or social triggers. So I've also, um, I also have people compile a list of their triggers. And then um, there's a, a thing called a personal job map, which I've created. It's very simple and easy to use, where you sort of cross-reference those two things. By the time you get done with it, you have, should have some sort of viable um, map to um, choosing your career and, and prior to that, your course of study. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Now, the last part of this work show, this, this program that you've put together, is for helping people keep a job. And what you've done is very meticulously go through different sensory triggers that might actually set somebody right. off, but it equips uh, the person... Speaking of sensory triggers, my dog's just uh, <laughs> heading up their own. Come here, Dennis. Come here, <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, well, let's talk about if you go into a workplace, uh, how would you coach somebody to look for things that could cause a problem in the future to avoid those problems? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it, there's a lot to take into consideration and, and much more than we can talk about here in a few seconds. But there's all sorts of things involved in, as you put it, last time I spoke with you, the care and feeding of people with Asperger's syndrome. So we talk about things like clothing and uniform and lightings and um, you know social issues and privacy on the job and scrutiny, autonomy, and how to um, work with yourself. You want to take care of as much yourself as you can, but then also working with your employer. Sometimes it involves disclosure, sometimes it doesn't have to, sometimes it can involve partial disclosure. Um, but it's, it's, it, you know, the book and the program will help show you how to communicate your needs in a way that you can help uh, you know, ensure your longevity on the job because if a person with Asperger's is overwhelmed on a daily basis, um, their their longevity is not going to it's not going to be they're they're not going to be able to stay for a very long time in that job. So it's really important to get you know these people comfortable and working in a position where this legendary focus and diligence can be put to good use. Excellent, Rudy. How can people find more information out about you? Well, my website is helpforasperger's.com, which I'm, I'm hoping you'll put up on the screen so I don't have to spell it. Um, I am available as a consultant, I'd like to add if that's okay. Um, I do work with people all over the world, one-on-one, -on -one, via telephone or webcam. And I am also available to come to your organization and speak or, or um, whatever. So do contact me through my website. Okay, very good. And I'll be back in touch with you shortly because we'll need to talk about Aspergirls when that comes out. Great. Thank you. I look forward to it. All right. Thank you, Rudy. And thank you, Autism Hangout. I'll be back again soon with another special report.